Today we are sailing on board the Superfast 400, a boat wanted by a ship owner who loves the Gulf of Trieste and loves the regattas that take place around the Jovian city. The project is by Rob Humphreys, a designer who has a long history when it comes to creating racing boats. He was one of the first to handle carbon with care and skill. One of his first big boats was the Maxi Rothmans, which took part in the Whitbread Round the World. On a personal note, it was the first full carbon boat I hopped on. Everything was black. And they were leaving for a world tour. I thought, how would they manage on the high seas with such a scary boat for various months? In summer here in the northern Adria, you have very little wind. So when I went to a regatta, which has, is actually not sailed by, by, op, uh, by, by index, but by, by open regulations. Um, so I was thinking I should, I should create a boat which is bigger so I can still use it to go with the family um, for the weekend. But also uh, I want to win this, these races because I think we are a good sailing team and uh, we should be fine to, to do the podium. And, and now we have the right weapon to do that. I love to race uh, fast and I love to race under strong wind. I had to learn to sail under light wind now with this boat. Um, I also own a foiling catamaran, you know, this is something, or a Super Maxi 86. This boat is, is really light, it's high out of the water, you feel, you know, just sitting on the boat. It's shaking a lot, you know, the little wind already moves it. Um, it's much higher out of the water than the sister boat, so at the end, uh, it's again a boat which accelerates fast, you know, you have a lot of action, it feels like a dinghy when you're on the steering. SF400 was born with a hull designed especially for ORC and IRC handicap racing, that is, time correction factor regattas. In reality, this particular boat has been upgraded to race in the open. In Trieste, they run mainly with this system. It looks like a fairly classic boat, but in reality, it's a thoroughbred. To those who are more technical, we can tell you that the current displacement is about 5,300 kilos. For the ORC tonnage, it is slightly lower, so it means that at this moment the boat is quite powerful. We are sailing upwind, full square top mainsail, obviously, and 100% furling jib. This is the core of the sailing adjustment, the jib traveller. This is the sheet. The sheet points can be moved essentially in all directions. There's a barber howler to raise and lower it, and there's a barber howler to control the angle of attack. For many years, this sail adjustment system was somewhat abandoned. Why? Because it's difficult for the trimmer to reproduce the original position and the maximum performance of the jib. But with these boats that have a relatively small jib and a vertical leech, it is necessary to be very precise in adjusting and controlling the output of the sail. Performance can change radically with just a few centimetres of adjustment. Obviously, the mainsail adjustment is also fundamental. It's no coincidence that this is called the mainsail. The position of the main sailor is in front of the helmsman so that there is an exchange of information. This is the winch for the adjustment of the sheet, and this is the sheet for the adjustment of the traveller. And here we are finally navigating upwind and this little jewel that is built for upwind sailing. The target speed in this fairly gusty wind is above seven and a half knots. It is a lot. It means being able to be in the fleet of bigger boats. At the helm, it seems to have returned to the boats of a few years ago. 
not for the antiquity of the hull, but for the fact that they are rather fiery. They perceive the mainsail a lot. If I leave the wheel, take a look at what happens. This behaviour is usually a sign of rather abundant drift surfaces, and not that of very light boats that are very dedicated to downwind sailing with little surface area where you almost have to push luff when you need it. We have already talked about the 100% furling jib and the square top mainsail. The set of sails is completed with a Jenica that reaches 200 square meters and a code zero. Obviously, there is also a nice bowsprit, as in all the modern boats. Yeah, well, Ocean Tech is a relatively small shipyard uh, based located in Slovenia in town Jesenice. Uh, we constantly employ up to 10 workers uh, and basically we are specialists in uh, composite constructions. All our production is vacuum infusion, we don't do any hand lamination and uh, in the last three years we are at 90% carbon builds. Yeah, this particular boat is basically optimized for uh, lighter winds sailing uh, upwind, downwind regattas. It's a relatively small boat, so you don't gain much weight if you use only carbon. So on this particular boat, uh, the hull skin, the deck skin is glass sandwich, but the structure, the bulkheads inside the frames, the keel floors, they are carbon. Going fast, but also having interiors where you can spend a few days of cruising. In fact, the owner uses with his family and therefore not many people on board. However, there are beds for six people. As you can see here, the environment is quite airy. There is a functioning kitchen and not an impractical one. There is a workable chart table, which is not simply symbolic. There are no cabins and doors, but we actually like that. The boat is an environment where you spend all day in company together. It is quite hypocritical to close the space with a door to leave only the noises out. However, there are decorative elements in which background research can be seen behind the work, such as these lockers, the table that recalls the large teak tables, the shape and the construction of the staircase. <laughs> 